All right. Can you see me, sir? Can see you crystal clear. All right. Well, greetings. You're looking awesome, man. So greetings. My name is James Oliver. I'm Trep Life Dad. And Trep Life Dad is the number one lifestyle blog for parent entrepreneurs. I'm a husband to an amazing wife, dad and co-founder of the world's cutest twins, Thaddeus and Zoe, and founder and CEO of We Montage, the world's only website that lets you turn your photos into large collages on removable wallpaper. And I am super excited to have Mario Armstrong today. Hey. Mario, digital lifestyle expert, TV commentator, whom you've probably seen on, on the Today Show, CNN, HLN, Fuse, I could go on and on. He's regularly seen on uh, Inside Edition, Dr. Oz, Katie Couric, Rachel Ray. He's a small business tech. Yeah, no, he's just, listen, he's just an all around great guy and a badass and a boss. And Mario, I'm pumped to have you, man. Welcome to Trap Life. Man, I'm pumped to be here, man. I love the idea of this um, ability for you to kind of create something that's going to uh, generate content for people, man, that's going to help them understand what it's like to be on an entrepreneurial journey as and, and being a parent at the same time. Exactly. And there's a lot of people that are hesitating to jump into being an entrepreneur because they are worried about those obligations and those responsibilities. And so I think I'm not certainly not suggesting I'm one too. And that's why I'm on the show, but uh, I'm certainly not suggesting that it's easy. We have plenty of entrepreneurs that are out there doing it, but I think there's never really been a place where you can have some transparency and some communication about different tactics and strategies that are working. And we all know, man, no two kids are alike, but strategies, no matter what, can always help a parent, especially when there's an understanding of what it's like to run your own business and be able to still have and run a household at the same time. That's exactly right. So let's jump right into it, man. I I think you made some really good points there. I mean, you're an entrepreneur. I mean, what inspired you to be an entrepreneur, Mario? You know, I think the thing, I think when I go back and just think about it, it was, um, I, I would probably say it was my dad watching him really be entrepreneurial. Um, yeah. I don't think I really understood it at the at that early age. Mm-hmm. So the quick backstory on, on Rod Armstrong, my dad, is that he was a, um, uh, a promoter for the music business in the 70s and he was trying to create what Motown had going on in Detroit he was trying to create that in Baltimore Maryland and so he founded two groups one was called Soft Tones one was called The First Class him and his business partner Ernie Donaldson and at the age of like five to seven to to ten I really remember going to his office downtown just (laughs) hiding in his cabinets just doing stupid stuff but thinking back (laughs) on those memories now I clearly remember him working I remember the old shag carpet the (laughs) those lights that would just like hang over like all the 70s <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in there. and then I remember um, I remember going to recording studios on the weekends and just being with him like all day Saturday and then going and playing in on the drums yeah. not really understanding so much about the business I was learning as I was watching but when that business didn't pan out and they had done very very well but they didn't break through to the big degree in the States. They did well overseas. They did a lot of travel overseas. And that was tough because there was a Christmas for sure that I remember when he wasn't home. So that was another thing that probably sat inside of me as a kid in terms of being a parent and you know, later on in life, like I, I look at some of those things that I learned from him mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and how I try to always be. And he was a great dad. Don't get me confused. Right, it was right, just right. this one Christmas, but it's, right. I still remember it. And I was just always like, how do I be as good as dad, but, but even better if I right, can, right? Right, And so I think from early on, seeing him go bankrupt, he went bankrupt with that particular business, and then seeing him still bounce back, right. um, it was rough and it was tough. It certainly wasn't easy, but watching his intest- his fortitude and his strength yeah. of going back out there and then working for himself in the financial services industry which is something that he wasn't doing at all in the music business, right. just blew me away that he was able to kind of build a solid company and then secure the dreams that he was telling us he was going after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I remember riding around, and, and, and he had a caddy, but at a certain point, the caddy becomes beat up when it should be replaced. <laughs> and so I remember riding around in a beat-up caddy, yeah. and we got new homes that he wanted to move into. And yeah. these, you know, huge homes were like, what? 
na- neighborhoods and zip codes yeah, that yeah, we yeah. weren't in. It's like, what? We're not, you know, what? Like, it was always you are in control of your destiny. Right. And so I think from him early on. And so, for the, but now as an adult, because I worked a lot of jobs until I became an entrepreneur, but I was always doing a side gig. So I always was doing things on the side right. and was hoping something would break through. And then I'd say in the last several years <clears throat> is when I got, I got, we were building our business and Nicole, my wife was running it and um, I convinced her to run it. That's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> I this is crazy. Right. She was making more money than I was. Right. And she was like a COO for two other startups. Right. And it was like, I think the time is now to like for you to leave your job and go run this run this hobby of mine that we need to turn into a yeah. business. Yeah. And she was like, You're crazy. I'm not doing that. I make more money than you. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you set it up and run it? Okay. Right, right. Yeah. That's a great answer. <laughs> as far as I can right now. Like, I'm carrying the ball as far as I can right now. And so eventually, uh, she did. She she uh, started doing some consulting on the side while we were building the business, and she put in, like, the pricing models and really started really taking when I was charging $500 to speak. I thought I was doing something, and she came in and totally. <laughs> yeah. So things have, things have gone exponential uh, since. Right. But she put in these models and in those pricing and in that infrastructure that was oh so needed. And so um, I think now running a business and being an entrepreneur, it has fulfilled the things going back to your original question. For me, it's freedom. Yeah. Con- control over mm-hmm. my own destiny. Yeah. And, and the ability to make something that I create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I love that comment about um, controlling your own destiny. And I don't, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole on this, but I just started reading, uh, listening to um, The Alchemist. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's kind of, you know, the, the, the world's biggest lies that you can't control your own right. destiny. And so I love that. I also love, you know, what you said about your dad in that, you know, he inspired you to be an entrepreneur. And like for me, you know, with the twins, you know, I have twins, they're 20 months uh, old and I want to be a shining example to them of what's possible when you believe in yourself and you follow your passion and you don't just play it safe, you know, taking the, you know, doing what other people want you to do. Like, I think it's risky playing it safe. I actually put that in my blog post today, but so I want to be, huh? I said, is that right? You think it's risky playing it safe? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, absolutely. You, 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 you can. I read a really interesting article recently. Of, I was thinking it was a nurse. She wrote a blog about the five things that people on their deathbed regret the most. Mm. Right? I mean, at the end of the day, life is incredibly short. And you don't want to, like, for me, I, I know, you know, if and when I die, not if, but when I make my transition, the one thing I will never be able to say is, you know, I could have, would have, should have. Right. Right. No, that's no, that's critical because, and that that's mm-hmm. the thing. That's why you know that's why the whole thing about never settle Absolutely. and the whole other movement that we have going, which, because we get so caught up in the responsibilities or keeping up with the Joneses right. or you know the issues that we have to take care of our elderly parents while we're also trying to raise kids. There's so many different pressures, responsibilities, things you want to do in life. And it does become very easy to become complacent. Yeah. And if that's where you want to be, that's sure. fine. Absolutely. But just understand that complacency can come with regret. Exactly. Because if you don't, like you say, take some risk or at least attempt to do some things, right. you are gonna you are gonna check off those things off the bucket list. Yeah, and exactly. They talk about that in the Alchemist too. You know, you just you can't you talk about burying your dreams and so anyway, I mean, we can talk about that book forever. I just started listening to it, but um, I, I love what you said there. So what, you know, what are some of the challenges hustling? Do you? I mean. Yeah, I follow you on Facebook. I'm in there, Brasetto Club. You're all over the place. Like, what are some of the challenges huff, hustling the way you do and being a great dad and husband? Yeah, I think um, number one, getting getting enough rest so that you can actually be in the present. And 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 this is a constant thing I work on all the time. Um, but I remember, I recall, you know, um, my wife Nicole saying to me, like, you know. Sometimes you're here, but you're not here type of thing. And she's way better. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you I'm glad you're having a ball with that. No, no, I'm laughing because my wife gets on me about that too. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the thing is, man, she's way better at being able to compartmentalize things. Yeah. And 
And it's why it works for us, though. It's why it's, yeah. she's great at what she does, and I don't touch her sandbox, and I'm great at what I do, yeah. and, I and she doesn't touch my sandbox. Yeah. So I think in a, in a, in a couple, in a relationship, when you're, when you're in a business relationship and, and you are a couple, it yeah. is imperative that both of you have distinctly different skill sets or distinctly different roles yeah. so that the overlap doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me is the biggest challenge with the hustle is um, I think the biggest challenge is leaving. Like whenever I have to leave the family to go do something, I always end up, you know, maybe the night or two nights before I start getting in this grumpy mode because I don't feel like leaving them. I start getting like old man grump. <laughs> Dude, I'm like living in that space right now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then it's, and then it's okay. How fast can I get back? You know, how fast can I turn around and get back? But I mean, I've known, I've been known to do things like uh, go to, go to the Today Show in the morning, um, and be on air. And it's, it's a train ride. It's about two and a half to, to two hours and 45 minutes or so. Right. Do what I got to do and then immediately get myself back on the next train to get back so I'm at his basketball game. Yeah, yeah, like, that's beautiful. It's just like, wait, weren't you just on TV in New York this yep. morning? I'm yep. like, yeah, and I'm standing here right now. Like, Let's go, Chris. Exactly, 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 exactly. So I think, you know, I think the, the answer to the question is the wanting to be everywhere when you can't at all times and I'm a big big believer in being a very you know first and foremost being a very good parent and a very great husband yep. and I've always told them and I continue to tell myself if I ever get to the point or we my wife and I ever get to the point where this business is damaging the relationship the business has to go wow that's amazing and so I don't think there's a lot there's some people that won't be willing to take that step and really shut it down but that's I'm not playing. Like it's yeah. not worth it yeah. if I can't have the success and be able to share it with the two of them. It's oh, that's, not worth it. That's beautiful, man. But so uh, I talk to me about some of the struggles early on. I recall seeing some things about, you know, cashing in coins and, and negative bank <laughs> accounts and all that kind of stuff. Can can you share some of that and what how that impacted yeah, you? And, um, so we launched so so we were building this company. And then I was still, I still had my day job. She left and was doing some consulting on the side. So we were banking some money and she was putting in these pricing models and all this good stuff. This is like 2007. We had also been working on AOL, a huge deal with AOL. It was a $250,000 contract with them. So it was the jumpstart contract. Like we've been working over when was a that? year. We shot some pilots with them. Like we put yeah. in some work and, and everything. When was that? And work came over. We finally, we had to get our business form. Well, I think our business was actually formulated, but we had to really hire a lawyer for this particular contract right. and go through all of that. Yeah. And I don't know. I had like eight. I had. I, I was. I was like, we're going to get this deal. Like this is happening. It's taken a while, but yeah. it's happening. Right. But then, two thousand eight, the beginning of the middle of two thousand eight. Um, my boss. I was working for this. I was working for the city of Baltimore for the mayor. The mayor had left the city, ran for governor, won. New mayor comes in, like, ah, we don't want you. <laughs> we don't want you. I don't care how good you are. I don't care what you did. <laughs> Cleaning house. So I got laid off. Yeah. So I get laid off, but I'm not sweating it too bad because I'm like, we got this AOL contract. It's about to pop. Yeah. This thing is going to launch the business. Count, count chickens before they hatch. And you know what happened. <laughs> you know what happened. <laughs> so we, we get the phone call that the deal's not going. Oh, that's so brutal. And I'm laid off. I got about maybe seven or eight months or so of some income. Yeah. And like I said, she had banked some money from consulting. But 2008 kicks in, man, and the president's like, we're in a state of recession. So now everything that we did have that was potential outside of this big contract that just knocked us in the chest, um, we thought we were going to be able to get some other money. And then we found out no money. <laughs> Like everything just dried up. So the big issue was at that time, do we try to get jobs or do we really say, you know what? We're about to hit our lowest low. And if we can get through this, then we, yeah. we should be up to the Yeah. And we decided to just barrel, barrel down, um, cut expenses as much as we could. We were willing to do anything except lose the house yeah. and really alter my kids day of life, his quality of life. Right. As long as we were willing to sacrifice and it wasn't affecting him or losing a home, we were in good shape. Yeah, but, yeah. So we pressed it to the max. We cashed out 401k. We, um, all four bank accounts that we had had now gone negative. Yeah. 
So we were robbing Peter to pay Paul. Credit cards got maxed to the till. Oh, um, family trying to buy money from family and friends. So the point is, I started having to pack up all the loose change to go to the coin star machines to get some damn gas money so I could try to hustle mm-hmm. to get to our next appointment to try to close some type of deal to keep some food on the table and at least keep the business afloat as much as possible. Yeah. But that was the yeah, yeah, you roughest, know. toughest, most uh, deprecating, humbling experience ever. That may not be someone else's mm-hmm. low, but, but that what not knowing how we were going to make our mortgage payment month to month was the most unsettling thing uh, ever to deal with for us. I mean, yeah. So, and she's, she doesn't like, she doesn't like, she's, she's an economics major. Oh, <laughs> incredibly risk averse. <laughs> she's you know, very risk averse type personality. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how'd you, like, so how'd you, so how'd you get through it? Like, what got you through it? <sighs> Honesty. Communication, lots of communication, lots of communication. Um, I mean, we cried a lot, man. We argued a lot, um, but we knew why we were arguing. We didn't let the arguments go. We really maintained the level of argument to keep it to the frustration of the business, right. even though I would want to be in a different room for her from her. <laughs> You know, or she would want to get in a different room from me. <laughs> you know, or she, she wants to hop in a car and take her drive. You know, somebody's got to cool off, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> man. Well, I would imagine um, that's an inherent challenge of you know being in business with your spouse, right? Yes, it is. Which also taught us a lot of lessons, and that's why I think since we came out of it, we're able to kind of teach other other partners how how to really do this and do this do this right. And yeah. some of the <clears throat> rules that we put in place to kind of uh, uh, allow those two things to coexist without them uh, tearing each other apart. Yeah, I don't see a lot of people but talking about that it, kind of dynamic. A lot of, faith, a lot of faith to get through it and just leaning on family as, as much as possible that we could and then just and then just hustling our asses off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just it's all about the hustle. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a lot of people. I mean, obviously, I'm not everywhere and don't see everything going on. But I don't see a lot of people talking about what you just said about that dynamic of a spouse as your business partner and how to properly manage all that. I think you certainly have a unique perspective on that. But I, I had one more thing I wanted to get to before we run out of time because I know we only have a few minutes left. And you know, you're rocking your Neville Settle Club uh, shirt, all right? Yeah, I yes. love I love the community the hashtag community video for this week in uh, Neville Settle Club. I, I watched that. I think I commented, tweeted on it a couple times. Um, I totally, I totally, huh? Huge supporter. You've been a huge supporter. So well, awesome. dude, I'm just trying to give back, man. You've been so incredibly supportive of me. It's the least I could do. Um, so I loved your community video, as I said, uh, and I agreed with your comments. And, you know, I learned that lesson the hard way when you talked about making sure you had your network in place before you need it. You know, right. it is, and I presumably you put that in your video because that's something that you see a lot, right? So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. It is, because as an entrepreneur, you're always going to need some type of help, some type of guidance, or some type of mentorship, and I, I firmly believe that if you really can maximize your connections that you have, you're going to find some gold in there somewhere, yeah. and if people don't know, see, I think it's twofold. One, I think you kind of need to be building your brand so people know what you are about, what you are doing, so when they don't even see you and someone else asks about you to them, they can actually spit it out pretty pretty close to what you would say because right. you've been putting your brand out there exactly. and communicating that message. Right. That goes a long way when the networking component becomes also very important to, because, because then you're not always educating every single person you're bumping into. Mm-hmm. Some of these people mm-hmm. haven't seen you build your brand or communicate your message. So that's getting out there as well. But you have to, it's tough. Like, And I've met some great people along the way, and I haven't cultivated them as best as I should. It's hard. It's hard. Why I wanted, you know, I'm human, and I wanted to share the honesty of some of those mistakes because I've had access to some phenomenal people, and I didn't do a good job at really cultivating a relationship with them and understanding how to do that without needing something. 
Yeah. Or, or needing something, but saying it's the wrong time to ask. And that's fine. Yeah. That shouldn't stop the relationship building. Yeah. You don't stop the relationship building because you're not, you don't have your ask ready or you right. don't think the time exactly. is right. Because then all you're saying is you're waiting to really establish a relationship with them just so you can get something back out. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, that network and starting to really get out there and hustle and meet people and, and get those cards and then find a, a core of folks that you follow up with consistently um, begins to build that, that network for you. Yeah. Now, I think that's some really good points. Uh, a couple of quick things before we get, go here. Yeah. I mean, do you have any aspirations of having your own TV show? And if so, can you talk about it or and like what's going on with that? Like, I, dude, you need your own show. Like, what's up? Yeah, hell yeah, I have old aspirations. <laughs> Media executives, what the hell are you waiting for? <laughs> I mean, you need your own show, like. What? No, it's um, it's a it's it's a very hard job to get a TV show in this business. It doesn't just happen easily, especially if you're trying to do it at the level that we want to do it at, which is at a national level, yeah. um, even international level. Um, and the talk show format is really really tough. Everything is reality. Everything is really docudrama, docu-soaps. It's all focused on on individuals and their crazy lives. Yeah, that's and because it's, not, that, that's um, an inexpensive business model for the networks. That's why, right? Very inexpensive business model. Um, like super ridiculously inexpensive business model, especially for the first few seasons. Yeah. Especially if it doesn't go skyrocket crazy, which only a few ever do in, in a year anyway. Yeah. But uh, what's, what's more important is that we just don't – I'm not – we, we could have probably done something earlier if we decided to sell out. And it hurts when you don't when you don't sell out, but it feels good when you actually get to your destination and you stuck to your morals and integrity. And that's why I tell people all the time, like, you, you have to pursue your passion relentlessly. Like, you can't pursue it halfway or, or yeah. I'm going to do it this weekend. Like, yeah. you have to pursue whatever the hell your passion is. Yeah. You have to pursue that passion relentlessly. But you, but me, you can't do it without sacrificing your morals and integrity. Right. So that means push to the absolute limits without crossing the line. Right. And so there's a couple of opportunities that we didn't want to cross the line because it really would have put us in negative program. And that's not what we're about. Right. We're like a mixture of Steve Jobs and Oprah Winfrey coming together, change people's lives through technology, but also with inspiration, right. motivation, and sympathy. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, you know, so it's getting close, man. Where we are right now is that we do have a distribution deal, and there is a pilot uh, being being shown around to some networks. Okay. And so we are super excited about that. But it's so hard to get a yeah, show, yeah. so we're ready for the backup plan to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. work out. All right. Back up. Okay. Well, one final question for you before I let you run here because I know you got to hop. Yeah. Um, so in my article I wrote today, I asked the question, are strangers more likely to help when you're starting a business than people you know? And, mm. and I just wanted to get your opinion on that <clears throat> based on your experience. If strangers are more likely to help. Right. Then the, people you the, know. The one starting a business. Yeah, I think for me it was a mixture. Mm-hmm. That's what I said. It was definitely definitely some strangers. Mm-hmm. Definitely some strangers. Mm-hmm. Uh, people some people close to you become either jealous um, or don't understand your vision. Mm-hmm. Haven't been an entrepreneur themselves, but I've never had a problem asking for help too. Mm-hmm. Well, if you don't and ask, I you don't think, get right. And, right, and I think how you ask also can play a big difference in how some people will respond to you. Right, right, right. I think if you ask from a very humbling perspective, if it's more. I've had more success in asking for advice. Oh yeah. Than than asking for someone yeah, to yeah. answer a particular problem for me yeah. or try to solve something for well, me. Well, what's the old adage, right? If it's you ask for advice, thing, you... The world, it's a funny thing, you know how that can work. Well, what's the old adage? If you ask for advice, you get money. You ask for money, you get advice. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, it's eight. It's eight fifteen my time. I know you got another call. You got to jump on. So I want to hop out. I really appreciate you taking time uh, to visit with me. And uh, dude, like I said, I just met you a couple man. months ago, man. But I love you, man. You're you're incredible. Man, look, we, no, it's it's true. It's true. We just we just met not too long ago, and I've and I've been a fan of your story and what you what you are accomplishing and trying to accomplish. The, look, if the product wasn't good, exactly, it wouldn't work. Exactly. So the things that a lot of other entrepreneurs are probably going to tune into this is be able to relate to you too, and, and, and myself. But when you know you have a good product, yeah, or a great product, exactly. But it's not growing at the time to right. the to the extent that you want it to grow. Like right. it could be growing, yeah, maybe not to the extent that you want it to. Exactly. Like I'm the same way. Like. I, we should already have a TV show. Like yeah. that should already be done. Yeah. We should all have the foundation for the kids, uh, based off of the TV show. Right. We should already have our, the book deal done and out the door. Like a lot of things are being worked on. Yeah. But you feel like productivity, and you feel like the gains that you should be having should be having a lot faster, and that growth should be happening a lot faster. Yeah. And so I connect to your story early on, man, and then. The whole NPR thing, and then yeah, yeah. just and then, oh. then and then seeing how people were actually responding to today show oh something that I did on your on your company. Oh, it was unbelievable. Just, well, dude. Was, it, it, Dude, we don't. I know we're out of time, but you, I mean, we'll talk about this some other time. But our stories are similar in so many ways that I'll have to tell you about some other time. Like, I like to hear that. No, so, like seriously, we're. No, yeah. We can come back and go part two on this. Like, we should come back and do a thing on on um. Parenting and running a company with your spouse. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. All right, my, cool, man. Well, I'm going to let you hop here. Mari, I appreciate you. Thanks for jumping on the first ever interview for Trap Life Dad. Thank you so much, man. I love you. God bless. Check out the hashtag Never Settle Club on Facebook, people. That's what's up. That's right. Peace out, yo. <laughs> Peace out.